parer à toi. To the Lamb of God, to your King of Kings, be strength and praise, Lord. The honors belong to you, to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the Lamb of God, the honor and power. Honor is yours. Our hands lifted unto you. Honor, power are yours. Unto the Lamb of God. Let's sing together, who is like you, amongst all the God, almost high. Who is like you, magnificent in holiness. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be blessed. We're going to apply the points of our training during this worship time. When we're worshiping and praying to open the heavens, we need to focus and worship and pray from the secret place. So it's from this song, which is very simple, which says, To the Lamb of God. So I'll start all over. To the Lamb of God be all honor and power. To the King of King be strength and praise. I told you that that when we want to worship we can be distracted subject to all sorts of thoughts preventing us from connecting and so to worship what we should do is to come with a burden we really have to come with a burden this is one of the first ways to stay connected and pay attention to everything you're saying and really think deeply about everything you're saying it to become like your burden of connection. So the first part of this song says, To the Lamb of God be power. When you start singing, Lamb of God. This is a scripture from Revelation which is mentioned. The Lamb of God speaks about the blood of Jesus. He is the Lamb of God that removes the sin of the world. And you say to the Lamb of God, be strength, power, praise. The strength is his. You focus your attention on it. And you see the strength of Jesus breaking your yokes. And that's what you're testifying about. Just singing a melody, now you're in the spirit saying, to the Lamb of God, he who delivered will be all the strength, power. And the second part of this song says, Who among you is like, who among the gods 
is like you. He's the only one. But there are very mighty spirits in the second heaven. And there are all sorts of things opposing your connection. Now you uplift Jesus above all of this. You say, no, they're not comparable to you. They're so little. And you sing it. Among all the gods, who is like you, O everlasting one? They are so little. Nothing is like you, Lord. Amongst the God who is like you, you are magnificent. Who is like you? No one is like you. You are above the verdicts of men. You are above those who decide. No one is like you. Who like you? like you among all the gods. No one is like you. No one is like you. You are worthy of praise. Work in miracles. You alone are worthy of praise, working miracles. Jesus, you are worthy of praise, and you work miracles. like you, you're worthy of praise. You do great things. You're worthy to be celebrated. Our eyes are set upon you. I would not keep the praise to whatever the world is showing or presenting. I will not say what they said yesterday. That which is great is you. You are great. And you work miracles. You alone are worthy. My God, my God. My God, my God. worthy of praise and my God you work miracles as we sing this we see the Lord doing miracles he who changes circumstances which are said to be impossible into that which is possible Lord you're the one accomplishing it you are the one accomplishing it Lord you are accomplishing it Oh, yes, you're worthy of praise. Working miracles. You're the one working so many wonders. Oh, 
yes, you are worthy. And you do so many miracles. You do so many great things. We need you. And you accomplish miracles. I see the miracles coming. You are worthy, 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 worthy. You are worthy. My God, you are worthy. You are worthy. Receive our clap in Jesus. Who is comparable unto you? No one is comparable to you, my God. In the heavens and upon the earth. No one is comparable to you, my God. Your grace, Lord, answer me. I come close unto you, Lord. I am approaching you, Lord. Oh, Lord, in your grace, answer me. Creator, 
I love you so much and I worship you. Oh Lord, my whole life is to serve you. Lord, be uplifted forever and ever. No one can compare unto you. My Lord and my God. receive the honor and the glory receive our clappings King of Kings Lord of Lord Almighty God thank you for this occasion you're giving us to come close to you during this school of the prophets thank you for this day Lord you enable us to always be here to serve you Lord may this moment be totally dedicated unto you use this moment to reveal yourself to us use this moment to heal your daughter your son somewhere in the world use this moment to enlighten someone use this moment to train an army of prophets and prophetesses use this moment lord here we are before you so wherever you are just lift up your hands towards the throne of god and say unto the lord that you're waiting on him lord we're waiting on you during this time we're waiting on you for you to guide us speak to us lead us we expect in you I am waiting on you. I am waiting on you, my provider. I am waiting on you, my provider. I'm waiting on you. You are my provider, my provider. I'm waiting on you. I trust and I believe in you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. We are waiting on you. Speak to us. Lead us. Reveal yourself to us. waiting on you king of king lord of lord and we know that you said that whoever seeks you shall find you and that whoever knocks it shall be opened unto him and we know you speak to us reveal yourself to us in the name of jesus amen so say very 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 good amen be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I greet you, brother. I re- greet you all. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. All of those connected on our various pages, I greet all the students of the School of the Prophets. Evolution, prophetic evolution season. Where I welcome you to this period of teaching. I hope you have your notebooks and to revisit this training, which will really help you to function in an effective way in this end times. Hallelujah. 
because this is a mighty, mighty weapon that Jesus Christ has given to his church for this end time, the prophetic anointing. He said, in the last time, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. You need this anointing in order for your family to be protected, to open doors where things to be, seem to be short, shut, to declare things so that they happen. This is the time when God accomplishes so many great things. We have so many testimonies of healing good things during this prayer time. It's also the time to also share, invite a person whose life will be changed through the school of prophets. So welcome in the name of Jesus. We're going to use now the opportunity to greet brothers and connect to this prophetic training, to this school of the prophets, I am here right now on Facebook. So I'd like to greet all the students of Facebook. So it's greeting time. Tell me where you're writing from, also. I greet you all. Let's bless a person and invite the person. Azav, be blessed. The faith of the Lord is upon you in your life. Daniel, all the way from the United States or DRC, be all blessed. I was on YouTube, and now I'm going on Instagram. Going on Instagram. Where am I? On Instagram? Is, are we on Instagram? Okay, I can, I can announce it. So on Instagram, I'm greeting Magali Sanu, Evariste, Mimi Bosela. Okay, okay, be blessed with the grace and peace of the Lord be with every one of you. I greet all those who are connected on our English places. That my Lord will be with you. Uh, I think this school, uh, this uh, class will help you to improve your gift, to improve the presence of God in your life. Welcome in this fellowship, in this gathering, in this school, school of prophet. Happy to be with you. Someone say good day, amen. And so as we're sharing, inviting people, we are going to connect to the testimonies, like you noticed regularly. Testimonies lead to miracles and wonder. When a person has gone through something and as the person is test testifying, there's a power in the air and some brothers and sisters lambanize it and have the same effect in their lives. So usually we do the devotional time, but today I wanted to communicate on the testimony before our devotional time. So let's go for our testimonies and receive our healings and deliverances. So share with someone so that someone connects to this testimony. Hallelujah. Let's go for our testimonies. Shalom, beloved in Christ. My name is Leila, and I would like to thank the Lord for his kindness towards my earthly father. In fact, since two and a half years, my father had been suffering from horrible pain in his lower back and his right kidney. The doctors had diagnosed arthritis and was advised to have a kinesis therapy session, which was done, and he seemed to have regained some of his mobility. But unfortunately, alas, it was only temporarily because a few months later, he was, he was back to his original state with excruciating pain, reducing motor skills, etc. According to my mother, who's not born again, it was witchcraft. But being a child of God, I knew that there was nothing impossible to God 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I continue to pray for the healing of my father. It is the only thing I could do since I don't see, live in the same country as him. I could not lay hands on him, nor bring him to follow the Saturday of miracle services. But the Lord, full of compassion, enabled a, Lord of, a word of knowledge to be given through Pastor Mohammed during the prayer for the members of Crop of Life. Indeed, during the prayer of Thursday, on May 13, 2021, Pastor said, Your soul is troubled because of the illness of your parents, but know that the Lord is healing them now. I received this word and I shared that since that day, my father has been well. He was bent over because of pain, can now walk straight. Seriously, I have no human word to express my gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ, who freed my soul by granting total healing to my father. Thank you also, Pastor Muhammad. You who has given us the opportunity to be part of this great divine plan that is Club of Life. De Remain blessed. Hello, Pastor. During the Mohammed Sanuko Live of the 4th of May, a sister testified about the greatness of God. She said that after 18 months of unemployment, God enabled her to have a job where she got paid $8,000 per month. I decided to connect to this testimony by saying, Daddy, if you did it for her, you can also do it for me because she loved me. You are the unlimited God, the CEO of every company here in Canada, and you will never able to have a job as an analyst. When I said that, I said I will not take less than that although I have no experience. And yet, it is very difficult to get a job here without any experience or connection. But I had faith in God. When the Mohammed Sanogo life was over, about two hours later, I logged onto my email and I saw a message saying that uh, somebody wanted to interview me in a risk analysis position. position sorry. Pastor, I had the total of three interviews, and despite my lack of experience, I was hired. I am due to start in two weeks by the grace of God. And what's more, with the salary that I asked my Heavenly Father for, Pastor, I will donate my entire first salary as I promised to my Lord, my God, my Father. And I'll send part of it for Tour 931. May God be blessed. May God bless you. I hope that someone will take the chance to connect to this testimony, my testimony, and see the power of God at work. Can you put your hands together onto Jesus for everything he has done? Hallelujah. May your name be blessed, uplifted, Jesus. You who opens the doors to jobs, you release situation, you give us the things that we desire. Thank you, Lord, for visiting this daddy. And I really have to rely on this testimony and believe that your grace is here with us on this day. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for the grace of healing, for salvation, for deliverance. And I believe that as we're connected to this testimony that your power is released through the internet, through the waves, and every person connected who's suffering in his body, sick in his body, is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. As I hear, as I give this word, I hear the name Beatrice, and Beatrice has a huge pain in her chest, in the middle of her chest. It's not in the breast, but in the middle of her chest, as though something comes to oppress and oppress you by the power the name of Jesus, this spirit that chokes you is casted out and now in the name of Jesus, demon that quenches you, that chokes you be a trace. By the power of Jesus, I command you to move away from her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I hear the name Oriel, Oriel, or Orion, by the mighty hand of God. You, you got up with a huge pain in your neck that goes down to your back, in your backbone. That spirit of death that has come to attack you is leaving you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As I speak, I see a woman to whom she was told that she was in the final state, terminal phase, and that she would soon die. And I pray that all those who are connected right now, They've told you that you're going to die, but I declare in the name of Jesus, you shall not die. You shall live and tell of the goodness of God. You shall not die. You shall live and testify about the works of the Lord. So it is, wherever you are, this sickness is not unto death, but to glorify God the Lord. Despite what the doctors have said, she's, God is saying that you will not die. God is saying you shall live. God is saying you shall testify 
of the works of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This peel leaves to the name of Jesus Christ, and I see a cascade of people who are healed right now from peels in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all those suffering. In the name of Jesus, I hear this same name, Beatrice. And I see Beatrice this time. I, it's like I see you in a vision. You are standing, and I see two men. And the Beatrice I'm talking about, I think she's towards Congo. And I see two people. You're called Beatrice. There's a person on your right, and it's as though I understand in, in, your, in my spirit that there are two marriage proposals for which you're hesitating. But I see also your hand is going towards the left side, toward the left person. And I'm trying to look, and I see that this person is in black, and the person is saying that that person likes to wear black. That person likes to wear black. So often there's... And that person often wears black, and your hand is going towards that person. You're called Beatrice, and when you go towards this person, the Spirit is saying no. Even if this person seems to convince you, if the person seems positive, if the person seems great, the Spirit is leading you now towards the right. And the Spirit is telling me, talk to, talk to me about sadness. You are someone who is very, very serious by nature, very good. But the Lord wants you to go towards the right with joy, peace, the joy, peace with which you will serve the Lord. So, Beatrice, you're in Congo, you're hesitating today between two people, and the Holy Spirit is giving indication, receive your divine orientation, receive your divine guidance in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who have difficulties with marriage, you see, whenever I talk about marriage, I keep saying this, Couples are often attacked by the enemies for the following reason. To cause most people to go into sexual morality and, you know, miss out on the grace of the Lord upon their lives. He constrains them to fornication and adultery, so the devil really attacks those who are about to enter in marriage, and he really attacks the couples so that he can create evils, because one of the strengths of the end time, not the system through which the enemy is going to be bringing a lot of sickness upon the earth, it is through the sin of sex. This is a sin that brings evil and tragedies. The Bible often talks about, about the prostitutes, which is like a huge open door, demonic open door. And these strange sicknesses which are striking our world right now, are caused by idolatry, satanic incantation, and the sins of sex, sexual immorality, and deprivation. So the enemy wants to cause many to live in this style of life, that is the reason why I declare and prophesy that every obstacle to your marriage, to your peace, your couple, as you lift up your hand, every obstacle is removed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is connected to this program, and as I speak, the mighty hand of God is coming upon you and releases the situation right now in the name of Jesus. You have the peace of the Lord. I hear this name. Clotilde, and I see someone who has a lot of misunderstanding with her husband. You have, you're married, you have a child, and there's so much tension, and you're wondering if you made the right choice. The Lord is saying, it's not a matter of making the right choice. It's from this couple. The Lord is going to bring, take his glory. He will make you a servant of God. If you followed my message... During the Pentecost, the Sunday message, how the Lord uses your scars and wounds to make you operate your ministry. In the name of Jesus, this disastrous couple is manifesting the power of God and transforms your tears into source of life. In the name of Jesus, may the grace of the Lord be with every one of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Hallelujah.
I pray also for the Lord to stretch forth his hand over Mali, who's going through difficult times. May the Lord grant peace to this nation. And may this situation of coup d'etat stop in this nation in the name of Jesus. And may every satanic claim against this nation be destroyed. So the enemy is really against this nation. So there are parts where there's democracy, where there's confusion still. And all of this is affecting this country, troubling it from the inside, so that it will be a favorable bed for the assaults of the enemy. But in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we think about money and praying about it so that May the peace of God be over Mali. I bless God for the men and women who are working in Mali, dear colleagues, servants of God. May the Lord bless you. Do not slacken. We're praying together. If Mali falls away, the separation will fall away too. So I really invite all the prophet intercessors, men of God, to remember Mali. What Mali is going through right now is a situation. So you have this nation. It says, though spiritually, you have Mali, Burkina Faso, who are like a spiritual shield to Satan's plan. You notice Nigeria, Chad, Niger. We have to pray for them and the work of God who are in this nation. May the Lord bless you for the battles here. For the prophets, intercessors in Burkina, for the intercessor prophets over in Mali, and all of the major, you know, gatherings you have where you pray, the Lord is hearing them all. But the war is still ongoing. Let's not slacken in prayer. Let's keep interceding. Let's pray for the authorities that the Lord may keep them. We keep praying. Let's not stop. May the Lord bless the program like the towers of prayer and the non-stop prayer. And I invite the body of Christ to join these brothers. Let's not look at what's happening in Mali like saying that again. Let's not say again. Let's come together in prayer because the enemy is planning something which is negative. Let's keep praying for Chad so that the peace of God be upon this nation. We are intercessors and move ahead. Jesus is always the winner. We're going to win in the name of Jesus. We're going to overturn the situation in the name of Jesus. May the body of Christ rise up. May the project of the enemy be overturned in the name of Jesus Christ. And may the, pro, may the gospel go forward. This is a nation where the gospel is going forward. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you for Mali, for Burkina, for Chad, for Niger. Thank you for this nation. Thank you for Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you for this different nation of West Africa. Thank you for them all. Be blessed, Father. I pray for Europe, for France in particular. Let's pray because we know that a persecution is being prepared. It's going to hurt the church. They won't close officially the churches, but they're going to have such a restriction that it should bring forth a discouragement and a spiritual death. But where the enemy thinks that he's going to be able to kill, but I declare the name of Jesus that God is overthrowing the situation and that this situation of pressure against the church is transformed into massive conversion in the homes. And I declare in the name of Jesus that every servant of God Whatever you're going through in France is going to contribute to the glory of God, will contribute to a spiritual revival, continue with, to lead to the fear of God. It will lead the church to go into a phase of prayer. It is this pressure that will produce milk and the will of God. And this pressure comes. But God will transform this to glory. Let's remain in adoration, constant adoration. Let's uplift Jesus. Because the spirit that has risen against the churches in France are part of authorities and powers which are mighty. But Jesus is uplifted above everything. So when you are faced with such demons, Every spirit that comes against you, the Lord said we should fight against these spirits, we will come up against them. 
The form of prayer that is good is not to say, I condemn you in the name of Jesus. What you should do is uplift Jesus above this authority. The European system is based on the management of authority, power, the executive power, and these various powers are very full of authority and they determine the life and the way people are going to function. Even if it is not the will of the population, they impose themselves by political games. So you have an an authority power. So the form of prayer which is good for Europe is elevation. We have to peep to humble ourselves before God and elevate Christ above all this authority. We have to position Jesus as King of Kings, already the King of Kings. We need to constantly favor worship. So you who are operating in this nation, favor the worship of the Lord through elevation. Elevation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I would like to use the opportunity to say that yesterday was my spirit was praying and I heard this warning against so called servants of God who contribute to favor persecution of the church. Some are, are backsliders. Some others are agents of the devil who are in the churches with titles, so-called titles, but they are servants of Satan. I'd like to say to all of you who call yourselves pastors, prophets, to all of you who have all of these titles, but who deliberately sleep with the church congregation. You live in sexual immorality. You live in sexual immorality, in fornication, adultery. I spoke about the sins of sex. I spoke about the sins of sex, okay? You are the ancient of Satan. I beg you by the compassions of God, repent. Because in order for God to prevent the enemy from reaching the objectives I spoke about, you will be judged. There's going to be a sweeping, strange sicknesses things that will strike you. This moment Sanogo Live comes to open a period of judgment against people who abuse congregations, who sleep with those who come to church, who commit adultery and sexual morality, who manipulate people. This is not the message of Jesus. This is not what we preach. This is not what Christ has taught us, if deliberately you're fighting against the kingdom of God, God will fight against you. I just want to tell you that God will fight you. And you're about to be battled against by God. When Gideon destroyed the altar of Baal, and that's what our prayers are going to do, that's what the intercessions will do, the church will rise up and will overthrow the altars of Baal in the house of God. And we will uplift the Lord. These altars will be overthrown. And the priests of Baal, that is you, who have the title of pastors. Meanwhile, you're liars. You call yourself pastors, but you're thieves. You say that you're a prophet, but you cheat. You abuse people. You have all of these titles. You present yourself as saints, but you are ravenous wolves. When you listen to my message and repent, may God be blessed. You'll be delivered. But if you don't do so, you'll be part of those people that will be spiritually judged and slaughtered so that this revival comes to place. Because you are contributing to putting the accursed thing in the house of God, and you'll be judged like Achan was judged. So this prophetic word of this school of the prophets, opens this time of judgment in the house of God. Our God is a God of grace and mercy. I know many will not listen to me. I know maybe will take this lightly because God wants to judge you. If you understand the word and you humble yourself, he's faithful and just to forgive you and change your life. But don't use the name of God. Don't use the name of God to sleep or cheat or crook against, be crooked against. Don't use the name of God to cheat. May the name of the Lord be blessed. May God, to God be the honor. God of heaven, may your hand be over your house. May Holy Spirit, may the holiness be unto your house. Lord Jesus, we are waiting on you. In the name of Jesus, amen.
May the name of the Lord be blessed. Amen. 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 And today, for our class of prophets, I have with me two students. I love all my spiritual daughters, but I love them particularly. I love everyone, but they're special. These two daughters, they're both called Justine. They're my Justin, my own Justin. Amen. They're with me for the school. So Justin, who usually comes on the set? She's a regular student. How are you? So when you see Justin in town, that means there's a program that's about to take place. She is used to taking her vacation. You know, she saves on her vacation to come to Abidjan to do her uh, crusades, to take part in the different conference and crusades. So the conference and crusades are really, you know, she was here for the Pentecost program. She finished the Pentecost program. And now she's going on the field. And we have with us Mary Justin from London. How are you, my daughter? Be blessed, blessed, blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You're blessed, Mary Justin. You're a huge blessing, my daughter. She helps a lot with prayer 24. She's always in her post, effective, intercessor. Be blessed. So what's your program? I came last week. I was here for the Pentecost program, and now we're going to the crusade, and then I'll go back. So we're saying hello to all the Londonian people, England, France, which is still who's coming from France. So before going to our class, we're going to go for our devotional time. Listen to today's message. It's really mighty. Let's go for the devotional time. You're following the devotional time of the Mohammed Sandugo Live. Daily devotion number five, fully blessed, overcoming the five types of enemy avatars, the blessing of Sabine with Pastor Mohamed Sanugo. Day 25, an enemy called Ishbosheth, for our master Saul is dead, and I am the one that the house of Jud Judah had anointed of to be king. However, Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth, Saul's son, and brought him to Mahanaim and made him king over Gilad. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. From chapter 2 to chapter 4 in the book of Second Samuel, the Bible tells us about the third adversity that David had to face. When Saul died, as soon as he was recognized king, Ishbosheth, son of Paul, stood up in with Abner against him. They are aware that God had given David the kingship, 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10 and 17 to 18. But Satan went through them to fight David's kingship, preventing David from ruling all over Israel for seven years. Ishbosheth is also called Ethbal in 1 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 33. Ishbosheth means man of shame, and Ishbal meaning Baal exists. So this is an attack by colleagues and relatives. Ishbosheth was David's brothers-in-law, and they were from the same generation. Satan would create a disagreement, a painful disorder, other, sorry, between some of your relatives, your colleagues and you. Attack number three doesn't come from above or below, but from below, from those who are at the same level as you. It's through this attack that Abel was killed by his brother, that Joseph was handed over by his own brothers, that Jesus was sold by Judah, etc. Beware of this threat. In this war, led by Ishbosheth, Satan used another avatar very close to David, Joab. 
Il se tape au Judas Iscariot type, the one who eats with you but stabs you in the back. All these are part of Abaddon attack number three. They reveal themselves against David at the same time. Secondly, their weapons. Satan will use the hours of criticism, jealousy, gossip, sorcery, witchcraft, rumors, slandering to strike you to death. Each push up type of avatar. Psalm 55 verse 22, he will hurl, he will hurl fiery darts of disloyalty and disobedience and even murder through jo the Joab type of avatar. The Joab type does a lot more damages than Isboshet. Many lies, ministry have literally disappeared because of this form of Satan's attack. Third, the objective of the attack. By attacking you by this avatar, the enemy has three goals. To make you bitter, that is to make you bitter. Abner, chief of staff of Ishbosheth, warned Joas that this fratricidal war would create much bitterness. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. Hearing lies against one set, judgments, slanders, hurts the soul, and creates bitterness. Meanwhile, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, bitterness deprives you of grace. The devil's purpose is just to, in making you all of these wicked words, is to create bitterness in you and thus reduce the effects of the grace of God in your life. Guard your heart on focusing yourself from the goal. Spending your time, your time defending yourself against wizard can get you out of focus from your mission. Defeating demons is not our goal. The goal is to possess our inheritance. Don't make fighting demons and your enemies your vision, but just it's them. Stay on course. Jesus said, I'm sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. And according to Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, Cain killed Abel. Joseph was almost killed. Job's advice could lead you to make deadly decisions for your business, your ministry, your home, and even your life. Be careful. Bitterness called by wickedness and betrayal can kill your soul too. Word to meditate. Psalm chapter 41, verse 10 to 14. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6. Psalm 55, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Today's action. Keep your heart and preserve. Keep my heart and preserve me from the wickedness of people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I really love today's message because it will help us in today's class. I finished last class. Open the heavens with what? My people told me the four openers of heaven. I talked about receiving the prophecies. Where the Lord said, I'll, the Lord spoke to Moses, God said, mouth to mouth. So people want to know what this is all about. You want to know about it, okay? So we're going to go on the scripture. It's really important. With regards to this form of revelation that we receive from God, what I'll speak about is really important. This form of revelation that we receive from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's come back to the main scripture of my teaching. I'll combine the devotion I will go into our class. Let someone now take Numbers chapter 12 from verse 6 to verse 8. Amen. I'm going to say a little about this word today with the devotional and then move to our class. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. I read the word of God. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. So note that generally that the gifts of prophecy come through vision and dreams, generally speaking. Because we are talking about open heaven. Once the heavens are open, 
God will speak to me. So when angels come with the information that I need, I'll receive the information through dreams and vision. So this is a reception mode. I got to the class of Bethel on the notion of reception of what God is sending us from heaven. And God is telling us here that he sends message to his prophet through dreams and vision. He said something else which is relates to Moses and the prophets of the end time, which is going to be much more manifested. Please pay attention to this today's training. Amen, amen. So let's say you've prayed, you ask God some things, the Lord speaks to you, He's speaking to you. And He said that what I will do is that I will give dreams, I will give visions. In the last day, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. They'll have dreams and vision. So dreams and vision are standards means to receive revelation from God. But there's a way that the Lord uses which is much more powerful. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Not so with my servant Moses. He's faithful in all of my house. I speak to him face to face. Even plainly, I speak with him face to face. And I said, why didn't God say, I speak to him and he listens? From, that is from mouth to ear. Amen. This is an expression, which means also that that we talk, I speak, he speaks, from mouth to mouth, he speaks to me and I speak to him. But I'm speaking to you about the spiritual vision of the notion that God is speaking about and we'll check it in other verses. So the standard definition of speaking face to face is that I speak to you, you speak to me. It's a dialogue. Amen. Amen. But there's a spiritual notion which is really important is that I speak to him mouth to mouth, face to face. That means that my word lands in his mouth. My word doesn't land in his dreams or visions. No. My word comes to land on his lips, and it's really important because in these end times, this is a mode that God uses. And people are surprised. They feel as though God doesn't speak to them, but God really is speaking to them. Sometimes God is speaking to you face to face, and you're declaring, your mouth is just speaking. If God speaks to you, He says, here's the matter of my life. I receive it. And when the word has come out, the face to face is so important, the prophetic, because that's what God uses. We're in a world that has been really corrupted. So there are many devilish powers that have taken control. God creates all things through His word. And now, we're still in revelation of dreams and vision. But we're going to go into face to face revelation. Enter in this area in the name of Jesus. What makes your word to be creative? So because God has spoken, he has declared it, things happen. Hallelujah. So where is the link with the devotional? The poisoning of the heart. Because of the heats of life, the attacks of life, through the attack of avatar type number two. When friends criticize us, we hear that this person has said this about us. This attack, avatar number two, each bullshit type that we study, is one of the major enemies of this type of prophecy. 
because this is something which really attacks your heart. Meanwhile, the Bible says that it's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. That's the reason why there's a sort of prayer that you need to develop, which I spoke about in the last training. When you feel that you don't have a lot of dreams and vision, it's very likely that, that you're the type of prophet that God wants to speak to face to face, but because it's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks, the things in your heart prevent you from receiving. So today, I'm, I give this exercise last time. I told you to pray for the purification of the heart. We're going to go practically to enable God to release this sort of anointing in your life. Amen. That's why you really got to be careful with today's devotional and check out what is outside around you that affects your emotion. When you think about a person and it hurts you, you've got to be careful so you're not a source of wound for the hearts of other people. Satan should not go through you to prevent your brother or your sister from being used. Amen. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. Put a hand over your heart and say with me, Lord, purify my heart, purify my thoughts. I give myself to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Put your hands together. With, put your hands together unto the Lord with me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm going to ask the communication team to put some pictures of the parallel who's praying, of the prophet who's praying, where we have the angels. We're going to talk about this movement before we get to the reception mode. That is when heaven has been opened. Hallelujah. Are we together? Dear yes, students, are we okay? Okay, okay, okay. Donc, n'hésitez pas aussi, je voudrais apporter pour la classe, notre école, même si vous n'êtes pas étudiant. Even if you're not a student physically, if I don't have the opportunity to take you on site, do not hesitate to ask questions. The team will tell you where to ask your questions because we're about to finish a class. And I would like to go over some things as necessary according to your questions and precise things. So my students, do you have any questions? Are there things? On this class, or better, uh, if you have any other questions, you can ask me. We had a powerful Pentecost program. Thank you, Justine, for reminding us that Pentecost was huge. Pentecost was dangerous, powerful, mighty. Hallelujah. In Pentecost, we received the Holy Spirit for the new harvest. Did you receive something? Tell me something that really touched you. The first teaching that touched me of Pastor Zanf. Pastor Zanf delivered me from the way I saw Haga because Haga I saw as the mistress, the one who comes to put disorder in something that God had already established. But she was a victim of history. So this delivered me because I learned that God comes to heal the broken heart. This is his priority. And even Hagar, who was in his plan, he felt obliged to come and heal the heart of this little girl. So this first teaching... I thought the Holy Spirit was just going to come, put us on fire, so that we go to the sea, to the to the fuel for the soul. And the Lord is like, no, that's not how you go about it. You can't go with something which is rotting, you're suffering, and you're smiling. But inside of you, you're not good. How can I use you to go and say that I'm a God of joy, of peace? 
How can I do so? Meanwhile, when you're alone, you spend all your time weeping. You're not good. And so this first teacher was like, oh, the Holy Spirit is going somewhere. I hadn't seen this way. I came to be on fire, and I thought that the first teaching, as soon as it was over, was to come. I'm on fire. I go and speak to Jesus about Jesus everywhere. The Lord is like, no, you're going to wait. You're going to be treated first. I will heal you, and now you go on the field. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And this goes with what I'm speaking about right now. It's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks, the state of your soul. That's why the Holy Spirit starts with consolation. The Holy Spirit starts with consolation. The Holy Spirit that operates in the life of a person without his or her soul being refreshed or comforted becomes a wounding prophet, a wounding evangelist. You see, you can't carry the life of God if the work of consolation hasn't been accomplished. And this message was really powerful, and it did me a lot of good. And I really saw that the Lord was leading us to start with this. Our final message, my final message was on this. The final message, the, fi the power of God will be accomplished through your weakness. Mary, she said, what about you? Like Jesus said, it's, it just went from one, one link to another. With Pastor Marcelo, he reminded us that we are murderers if we have the possibility of saving or talking about the good news and we hold on to the to the packaging. That is, there's some people. There are some people who don't preach the message because they are arguing about should you wear trousers or not, makeup or not. It took me years back when I was in the church. I bless the Lord because I saw this good foundation. When I would come back from my vacation from France and I would go to Abidjan, people would evangelize me because people would, I would come in uh, trousers to church. And Pastor Marcelo told us that a woman can be a servant of God. And he was saying that it was a woman who brought him back to the Lord. Amen. See, this seminar delivered many people. So whether it's with regards to the appearance, what you have to do, First of all, you need to know that it's this behavior of the church that caused Christianity to disappear from North Africa and the regions. People went into theological debates and no longer proclaimed the gospel. The gospel comes to save lives and establish people in their inheritance. will come out of it. The man of God really insisted on it. Evangelizing is not an option, but an obligation. We're working for people to come out of a pit of, of perdition. Now, so what concerns which anything which is external, the Apostle Paul is saying that it's the culture that we should adopt to better evangelize. When we go to evangelize, for example, in the northern zone, where people's traditions say that women should not wear trousers, they should wear veils, we wear the same thing so that our Clothes will not be an obstacle to the preaching of the gospel, so I am not judged by myself. I will adapt myself so that my message can come across. If there's something upon me that can prevent the saving of my brother, I will remove it because the most important is for his soul to be saved. We were blessed in all of this various teaching with the name of the Lord be blessed. We're on fire. I really, really advise you to take and listen to these various teachings and the fire of God flood you. Put your hands together unto Jesus. We can comment every message, but we won't have enough time to do so. You can listen to the teaching all over again. So we're going to finish with the class of Bethel. 
The theme of my teaching is prophetic evolution. You who's following me, among the solutions God has given, there is a gift, and there's a gift of prophecy which visits many of you and maybe don't know, many don't know. The people who bury it and don't know what to make of it through lack of teaching, through total ignorance, through rejection, many have a reason and depriving yourself of such a grace and instrument will weaken many Christians. When Jesus says, the end times are near, when Jesus, through Apostle Paul, mentions the various spiritual gifts, he says, seek ye first the gift of prophecy. Seek ye first. We learned with the first season that the ministry of prophecy is not words we say, thus says the Lord, but it's to speak in an inspired, a way which is inspired by God. This word will save lives, We save you. For example, when the sickness struck, I was led by the Spirit to say, sickness, you will not enter in my home. So by saying this, what I did was to come through the prophetic way to prevent void, uh, void zero or COVID-19 to enter into my house. And by God's grace, no one in my house has been affected. I did a lot of tests for my travelings. We did a lot. Nobody had any positive result to the COVID-19. There are many things for which you should rise up and understand what God has given you. And the thing we're going to talk about today, which will lead us to the class of Jericho, would enable to use this power. We saw the spirit that came to draw the child. And because the woman in London listened to the message, she used the word of the prophecy and her child came back to life. The child would have been killed without the ministry of prophecy. You listen, you need to know that Satan slaughters. He kills. Every dead person is not dead according to God's will. But as soon as the evil arrives, a prophet can come under the unction of prophecy. Someone who has the gift of prophecy can prevent that evil. And I'm trying to explain to you the word of God so that you understand what you're going through right now. And if eventually you're not going through this thing, ask God for them so that he grants you this gift. The Bible says, see for the gift of prophecy. But we're afraid of this. And the enemy created this psychosis around this game because people are saying you can lie against us, against God. There are many things putting us away from this. That which God has given us, which is good. If you want to walk in sincerity, you don't want to say, God says a lot. Meanwhile, you have to, meanwhile, God hasn't said, God knows that you don't want to say any nonsense. That's not the, a reason why to reject the gift. Because what other solution is God going to give you if you don't accept this gift? How was Elijah able to pull down the altars? It's true prophecy. So when we're in the end time, this is a ministry that really comes to resolve many things. And I beg you by the compassions of Christ. Follow this training. The prophetic evolution is the training of the prophets according to Elijah and Moses' staff. This is when where the forces of demons came upon the earth to operate. Israel was captive over Egypt. There are demons that hold captive the whole population. In the time of Elijah, Mrs. Jezebel, the wife of Achab, came to bring in the midst of Israel statues. She arrested most of the prophets. Some prophets were hidden. But the atmosphere was very negative, and there are alt altars of Baal everywhere. And that's when God brought forth a prophet in the category of Elijah, who came and faced directly these idols, these divinities. He broke them down and enabled the reign of God to come back. So when a period of spiritual 
intense spiritual confrontation, the end times were announced with similar times. You see, when you have sicknesses like void zero, which are huge demonic manifestation, the sexual morality has gotten to a level which is incredible. During Pentecost, I visited some statistics in the country like Cote d'Ivoire and many other nations, drug in school, the rates are very high. Sexual immorality, prostitution in Cote d'Ivoire, nearly 73% of abortions are done by students. If you take 100% of 100 people who do abortion, 60 to 70 of them are young girls, students who go for abortion. What does this mean? It shows the level of same sex among schools. And yesterday I was following on the radio where people were speaking about abortion. And they were looking at it because the, the people were saying like, Abortion in Cote d'Ivoire is forbidden by the law. And people were saying, is there not something we can do to take care of the girls who come for abortion? They came, they, they came back on the, on the statistics and they interviewed some young girls who had aborted, many at the age of 12, 11, 12, who were traumatized by what they did. If you're in this case, and I'm speaking to you, Jesus is a comforter. The church is not rejecting you. Do not reject children. Do not reject children. Jesus welcomes people. You have to welcome them. Even the law condemns them. Jesus said that when the law condemned this adulterous woman, who among you has yet sinned? Who hasn't sinned? Let's open our hearts and receive people who did abortions. It's a sin. It's not a good thing. Let's use this opportunity to win the soul. In my message in Pentecost, this was my message. I said the wounds of people. So you have gone through this. You sisters who have gone through this. Your testimony will help people. The evangelism of earth time comes from testimony. And there are many of you listening to me who keep quiet on this part of your life. You've suffered. And you present your life saying that Jesus has come to transform you. Don't, but people don't know where you're coming from. And my message is saying that your scars are the points from which the embracement will come to convert a lot of people. Amen? So, your story, your past, write about it. Say a word about it. Use internet, like Pastor Marcelo told us, to say, okay, I'm standing here. I was, when I was on Facebook, I was... There are people present themselves as coach, and some of them speak well. I listen to some others who give advice, but you're like, it's the devil who is even speaking through them. They were, you know, trivializing sin and evil, the discussion of life, and people were laughing about it. And I, I'm not saying that. My sisters, brothers in Christ, the change that Jesus operated in your life can change many people. It can save many people. Yes. There are many people, young people, listen to me, who are specialists in abortion. You slept with 40 girls. How did Jesus visit you? Why did you stop all of this? How did you come out of masturbation? How did you come out of cheating? How did you come out of all these things? So the God of consolation that Pastor Zando spoke about us, spoke about and people don't testify because they're so ashamed that they don't want to expose their lives in order not to be seen as dirty people say that oh you really did all of this and people will not want to marry them see that's how people think no deny yourself what did jesus do for you he took you out of a situation to be forgiven he comforted you and if you ever be comforted if you've gone through a tragedy, negative things, it has happened to every one of us. Every one of us has his story. And God wants to use it. Amen. Are we together? So I'll say good amen unto Jesus. Amen. So let me drop all of this and let me come to the various classes and schools. 
The prophetic ministry is important. This is part of God's solution. The prophetic evolution. In the prophetic evolution, God brought people like Elijah, who in this end time have mighty, mighty, mighty messages, and I'm sure you're part of them. Amen. So how will you use this gift? I told you that even marriage can be blocked by this because of the absence of the prophetic. People like Prophet Elijah went to the class of Gilgal. Earlier on, I gave prophecies, warning those who pretend to serve the Lord, but who use his name to abuse people. Amen. Bro, we are all receive grace from God. I don't want to judge nobody. I'm just trying to say that you shouldn't use the name of God to do evil to people and to sin against God. At the class of Gilgal, God sanctifies and circumcises your heart. He sanctifies and circumcises your heart. You cannot be an Elijah Elijah type of prophet and not deal with pride, the desire to show off. The characteristic of Elijah is, especially John the Baptist, they used to wear rags, sign of humility. I beg you, if you have the gift of prophecy, it's a gift. But the spirit of prophecy of the end time transits through Gilgal. Listen to the teachings on the class of Gilgal, how you circumcise the heart. And when every time, it's like a school. If I went for plumbing, I will never forget what I learned in first year. If I find myself in a situation of plumbing and the class that dealt with it, I will go for that class which is in first year. So no matter the life you're going to have, even if you've gone past the class of Gilgag, you're going to have to go to open up the classes that we, that the lessons you learned in class of Gilgag to relearn all of it. So after the teaching on the circumcision of the heart, we now get to the class of Bethel. So with the class of Bethel, the, which we're concluding. So the class of Bethel is based on Jacob. He got to the town of Luz, which is, talks about the almond tree, which talks about the watches, and he had a dream where heaven was open and angels were ascending and descending on a ladder. And Jacob called that place Bethel, the house of God, where the heavens are open. So the class of Bethel will help us to open heaven to enable God to send us power and information. So practically, let's say I have a prayer topic. A situation that delays in being accomplished. I'm looking for a job, I don't have it. I want to get married, but the marriage is not coming. But I'm seeing that, and I'm seeing my brothers and sisters have hindrances, obstacles. I need daddy in heaven to guide me, to tell me, am I faced with the curse of the end time? As a Christian, a curse can affect me all around. So what should I do? I'll do it like the prophets who come through these classes. I'll go seek for God first. I will rise up and say, spirit of singlehood, leave. No, or syllabus, leave. No, because I haven't yet received the word. God hasn't dropped his word yet on my lips. I can't say, speak. It's not because I will say, spirit of syllabus, leave, that it will leave. It's because God has said it has to leave, that it will leave. Amen. So, I'll go seek God, first of all. Is it the will of God that I have a job? Do I know if that is the will of God? Yes, it's the will of God that I get married. Even if you're in a nation where the situation of COVID-19 is such that you don't have a job, you are his daughter and God wants you to have your job. But you're faced with the unemployment of everyone. What should you do then? What you do is you go seeking God. As a prophet, what has God taught us in the class of Bethel? When you're seeking God and you need to ask God things, favor the time of prayer between 6 p.m. and midnight. Amen. This is what I call the watch of the time of lose, the four watches. I'm seeking for God to arrange me with God to marriage, to arrange me with God to marriage. I'm seeking for God for direction. The situation seems blocked. I've been praying for years. I have no solution. So here we're not supposed to start praying at 4 a.m. The prayers of 4 a.m. 
which opened the day are prayers of Jericho. We'll soon learn about them. In this case, I'm trying to open heaven so that angels can come and explain and give me guidance. So this prayer can work at all times. But the more persistent the problem is, I need to understand that the atmosphere is complicated, and then I will favor the two times of prayer. And we call it the offering time. I will pray. If I pray and pray and have no answer, I'll rise up to God with offerings. So in my prayer time when I'm seeking the face of the Lord, I can come and present offerings. Hallelujah. Offerings that have the characteristic I spoke about. The offerings come to open heaven. Other open, openers of home that you know, alms, taking care of the house of God. Hallelujah. So I'm seeking for God. I am seeking for God. Cornelius is someone who was seeking for God. When the angel came to see him, the angel told him, God has heard your prayers and remembered your alms. That's why he has sent me. So why did the angel come? Because of the alms. Because of the arms. So this is someone who gave to the poor. So giving to the poor opens heaven. Being in church, looking at brothers in difficulties and helping them, giving to them opens heaven. Going on the street, seeing someone has no food and give him a bag of right, that opens heaven. So you can combine the four. You can com combine the four. You have to seek for God until the heavens are opened. So between 6 p.m. and midnight, the first watch is from what time to what time? From 6 to 9 p.m. Amen. A watch will last for about three hours. I'll then favor the prayers where I see God, where I say, Lord, I'm waiting on you. You are my provider. Provider. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Standing here in your presence. Seek for the presence of the Lord between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Ask God questions. It's very likely that after you sleep, if you sleep after this time, the Lord will give you a dream. He will put words in your mouth. Are we together? Amen, amen. If I go after the first watch, I get to the second watch, which is from 9 p.m. till midnight. What I will do is to favor praise. Amen. In this case, I will just uplift God. In this case, we are in the case of Paul and Silas. In the middle of the night, pam, the Lord came down, he opened the priest, he said, leave here, no time. As they were singing the praises of God. So singing the praise of God is all about saying that God is great. You're going to be favoring the greatness of God in this time. So give me a, a song which says that no one is like you. No one is like you, Lord. No one is like you. My God, I lift up my hands to worship you, bowing down before you. I admire you. I declare no one is like you. You're going to believe God and say the great things he has done. All this is part of the two seasons to open heaven. Amen. Glory be to God. Once the heavens are open, God is going to speak. This is the part reception house of God. 
God can speak to you, but he can give you dreams and vision. Even if I talk to you about the best way, and you don't say, Lord, I don't want dreams and vision. Put the words in my mouth. God can speak to you through dreams and vision. Bringing the word in your lips releases a lot of power. The words which you receive when you're face to face with God, it's as though God sent you a revelation and comes to resolve the problem immediately. We're going to read some scriptures, my daughters. So, First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 2. The second scripture is taken from the book of James. James chapter 5, verse 16. Let's start reading. First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 2. Reading the word of God, Elijah the Chisbite of the inhabitants of Gilad said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and get away from here in verse 3 and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Cherit, which flows into the Jordan. Amen. So you have here Prophet Elijah who said to the king, Ahab, Ahab sorry, there shall be no dew nor rain. He didn't say, except at the word of God, but accept at my word. Except at my word. Hallelujah. So, verse 3 then says, the word of the Lord was given to Elijah. Who could have come and said, thus says the Lord. But the word that Elijah released came from his lips, but at the same time was God speaking. It's this anointing that men like Moses had. Why did God speak to Moses face to face? Because God would drop in his lips mighty words. So it was the mouth of Moses, but it's as though the mouth of Moses. It's a strange phenomenon of reception, revelation of prophetic word of the end time. It's really important that you declare against negative dis situation. You have to declare the will and the plan of God. But the thing is that when you speak, it doesn't come like a revelation received. So it looks very much like your word, but at the same time, it's God who's speaking. How do we know it's God speaking? Let's read in the book of James chapter 4. Sorry, James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Elijah was a man with the nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced these fruits. My brothers, if... Oh, it's okay. Sorry. Stop at verse 18. So Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, a man like you and I. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. So it means that when Elijah went to say, it shall not rain except at my word, this sentence is the fruit of his prayer. Because the Bible said that he prayed first. Amen. 
He prayed for rain not to fall. He didn't rise up to come and speak boldly. The Bible said that he prayed first of all and he heard or received. I don't know how he received this, but he prayed and he knew that it was no longer not going to rain. He said that there was an injustice. It isn't God who said, I'm going to stop the rain. It's Elijah who came and said, God has to judge. And I just said, There's, there are too many statues. And he went to pray to say, God, let it not rain anymore. The Bible says, He prayed so that there wouldn't rain. it wouldn't rain. Hallelujah. He said, Oh, God. So the evil that struck them was provoked by prayer. He said, God, up to when would idolatry continue in these people? How long would the witches mistreat my family? How long would they keep raining? You open the heavens. You won't say, I'm waiting for the revelation. You won't say that I wait for things to change. If Elijah had not prayed, the rain would have continued falling. The people would have continued living in this way. Why did the people of Baal think that they could resolve the problem? Because they felt they were mighty too. So if there's no prophet like Elijah, witches will reign. They'll colonize the country, send witchcraft, and continue to prosper. As so there was no sin. The people, the country was normal. And now Elijah told God, God, Daddy, these people abandoned you. The people abandoned you. Open the eyes so that they see that if we don't adore, worship God, we've come out of the way of God. And he and God were stuck in saying, what can we do so that they understand? So he went for the judgment. He prayed and prayed. Went before the throne of God. The Bible said that he prayed earnestly. And he and God agreed on what to do. And they agreed that it wouldn't rain anymore. And God said, okay, fine, it would rain. And that's what was done. That's why he said that it would not rain except at my word. It's not that he was lying down and then God came to tell him, okay, my son, it will no longer rain. He said, if it was God who had said it, he would have said, God says the Lord, it's a word, a judgment he went after. It's because he wanted to bring the people to the repentance. This is the sort of prophets that you're becoming. Amen. But the tr- that the training of better is enabled to have. Such may stop the injustice. But it is for you to be an open of heaven. Amen. So who does the open heaven just undergoes the prophecy? If God speaks fine. If God doesn't speak, he doesn't. So as God opens heaven and says the revelation according to him. But that's not the category of prophet I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about people who notice that something going wrong in the atmosphere and they tell them that this has to stop. I'm speaking to people who are revolted. The situation which you see, everybody is there, the sick around, people are suffering around. Those who go to school stop early, girls become pregnant just like that. You're like, oh God, if you want to change the situation, change the situation. No, that's not the sort of prayer we should be praying. You pray earnestly. Say, Daddy, we no longer want injustice. We no longer, we no longer want all of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, it shall not rain except at my word. I mean that it is my mother has the key. My mouth has shut down and my mouth will open. Amen. Amen. But the interesting thing is that to open heaven, what did God do? We know the prayer he did because he went up on the mountain. But before going, he informed Ahab, he said, Send this prophet, let's fetch each other, and afterward we'll resolve this problem with the rain. And rose, he went and prayed. But before praying, he did one thing. He went through the, the altars of Baal. So he felt the witches. He broke the altars, put back, and set back the altar of God. He called fire, and the crowd said, it's the Lord that is God, the Lord is God. 
And then he was about to say, my people see. And he prayed for the rain. He prayed for the rain. Several times. As soon as his servant saw a, a cloud, he said the Lord was about to bring down the rain. The type of prayer you should adopt. You're a man or a woman has to open heaven and you have to be able to shut the heavens. You have to be capable of opening the heavens. You have to be capable of shutting down the heaven, and it's possible. That's what I've been teaching right from the beginning. That's the class of Beth, though. What are the workers of heaven using? What are the men of God using? At the earnest prayer or praise or worship or prayer. That is the thing with which we open heaven. And now we get to this point. Once your heavens have been opened, God can drop words in your lips because we saw that God told Moses there's one thing I told you last time where I say mouth to mouth or lips to lips or face to face if we say so we use this expression in our language to speak about So, when we say speaking face to face, it's not about kissing. When a person has drowned, one way of bringing that person back to life is to break in the person. We speak about mouth to mouth or face to face when we communicate a breath. So, when God is doing a face to face with Moses, what he is doing, in fact, is the Lord sends his spirit, his breath into the person. So, the Face to face is a prophetic type of word you're going to receive. It's as though the level of anointing you have. Don't have the information only. In the face to face, God says, I'll stop rain or I'll bring it. That's the information. But in the face to face case, you need energy. And so God is saying concerning this, we want to communicate life, communicate power, because entities fighting against you that maintain your whole village in prostitution and sexual morality where people, girls and boys give themselves over to drugs <laughs> if you want to be able to say it will rain only at my word you need power when God goes through dreams there's an attenuation have a dream and vision, you need to go and fast to receive power. So vision in itself has no power. This vision is not creates trees. What creates is the word. God creates all things through his word. Amen. The system is that you come by the word to uproot and by the word you're going to plant. So, instead of going through a lot of losing energy in power, losing your energy in decoding the vision. Once you finish doing all of that and declare the word, the, the word is going to have very little power. So the face-to-face -face is as though God was doing a shortcut. Instead of going round the long way, he creates a shortcut. Immediately he sends the word in your mouth. And it comes immediately with power. When you open your mouth, pow! It's an explosion. Enter in the face-to-face -face, face in the name of Jesus. So at this level, the prophetic, the Bible speaks about it and says, speaking about the end-time prophets, the Bible says, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter Determine chapter 18, verse 18. 
I will raise up for them a prophet like you. I will raise up from them a prophet like you. And who are we talking about? We're talking about Moses. God says there will be a prophet of the category of Moses. So there are many prophets, but there are prophets who are in the category of Moses. Those are his characteristics. I'll put my words in his mouth. Those who are like Moses will put the words in his mouth and drops it on your tongue. Pam. So it is a word that doesn't go through visions. It's not that you see. Last time I told you that when I go into this atmosphere, I don't usually have visions before. I see what I'm saying. The most prophets say what they've seen. So they've seen and then they say, but that's not my case. I'm saying what I'm seeing. I'm seeing what I'm, I'm seeing what I'm saying. So last time we were speaking about Chad or the nations, the word came in my lips. It didn't come in my vision. It's not as though I see a vision. I'm like, oh, I have a vision. I see this country. That's not what happens to me. Oftentimes, in the prophetic, I start talking. And for example, I hear the nation. It's as though the nation, name of the nation comes on my, on my list. 90% of the word of knowledge, the word comes on my lips. As soon as it comes on my lips, last time we spoke about a sister who had back problems. The one with the bad back. She was in Congo also. So the word came. It was it wasn't a vision I received at home. It's not like I sleep and the Lord shows me here's what's gonna happen during the moment that I go live. No. It's while I'm here right now. Even the message on the face to face, I didn't receive it home. I connect to this anointing. It's here what I'm teaching that the word comes. The revelation comes, but I'm going to give you a tip. There's, there are two things that you need to produce this. But this is a gift that frightens because we want to be reassured. We want to be able to see and say, brother, I've, I've had a vision. I saw that tomorrow, in three days, you're going to get married, or in three days, you're going to travel. It reassures us. It reassures us, but it's not mighty. When the brother was going to travel in three days, the thing that prevents him from traveling is a satanic entity. Telling that he's going to travel is one thing. Because you said, I've seen, does it really? Because when we're faced with such attacks, attacks for which Elijah and Elisha are faced with, for example, when God says, they they come and oppose themselves. In the time of these prophets, there was a woman by the name of an, of, of um, Jezebel came. She said that I was going to kill. She said she was going to kill these people. So he has spirits, evil spirits, who know exactly who God is. They know exactly the power of God, but still they want to traumatize you in sin. These are not spirits that will submit. For example, if you say next year you're going to have a child, it means nothing to the person. It's because you've seen that, that they will try to kill you and prevent you from having a child so that they'll be able to say that, ah, God hasn't spoken, they're terrible. You see, in such thing, God has to bring prophets like those of the category of Moses. In this case, God said, I won't go through your house. Before you say, I've seen... <laughs> You would have been wicked. People would have seen with you. The demon will see the translation and they will have a terrible struggle against you. When he came, he just said, In three days, you'll travel. At my word. As soon as the word is released, it can come calmly. You don't need to shout. At the same time things are created, the demons that wish to block the visa begin to leave because has just spoken. God has just spoken. Hallelujah. 
God has just spoken because God speaks. God dropped his word. It comes with all of the energy that comes from heaven. Hallelujah. And I want you to learn this. This is the last class of, or last topic of the class of Bethel. So when the heavens are open, would they come down through dreams of vision? Would they come down on my lips? What scripture were we reading? We're in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. And he will tell them everything I'll command them, verse 19. And it shall be that whoever does not hear my word, which he speaks in my name, I require of him. So this is a high-value word which lands in the mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Isaiah 51, verse 16. Jeremiah 1 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Amen. So, what's going to happen when I will pray later on is that God is going to touch your lips. The Spirit will touch your lips. You want this gift? I need to explain. Do you want this anointing? Do you want God to put the words on your lips? Do you want to speak by the Spirit? So get ready because God is saying that I'll touch your lips. That the Lord stretched forth his hand to touch my lips. And the Lord told me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth as I speak. The power of God is coming over all of you students of this training. And the Spirit of the Lord is putting His words in your lips, in your mouth. He's touching you. I want to say at the end, I want to pray, but I feel a movement like angels moving everywhere, dropping, touching the mouths of each other through the people, the nations, wherever we're listening to. The hand is put on the mouths of these people. Time of great deliverance and healing. Hallelujah. You see, from this moment, you rise up and just declare. We'll just rise up. You say, I come out of righteousness, and that is it. You see, when the Lord just saves it, you come out of it. Nature will dispose itself to get you out of righteousness. Amen? You don't have the time to say, I've seen, that I'm fine. I'm... No. You don't have the time to see. We've been seen for a long time. Now, things need to change. There needs to be creation. There needs to be creation. Something has to be prevented, and there has to be the creation of something. Amen. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. I, I put my words in your mouth. I cover you with the shadow of my hand. I stretch out new heavens to put together a new earth and say, Zion, you are my people. The Lord said, I will put my words in your mouth so that you stretch forth new heavens. That means that when the words of the Lord are in my mouth, I can create a new heaven. When the word is in my mouth, the Lord is saying, I put my words in your mouth. I covered you with the shadow of my head. The goal here is for you to proclaim a better horizon because new Heaven is the end of time, the return of Jesus, but I proclaim a new heaven. Your closed heaven is open now in the name of Jesus. I declare your heavens are opened. Your life changes. I declare in the name of Jesus. When you are a prophet, in the mouth of whom God puts his word, you open heaven. He said, I put my words in your mouth to, to do what? That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. Everything the earth had cursed, every curse that had been put over the soil of that person, he who has the words of the Lord on his lips is as though God. God has created everything by his word. He said, Let there be light, the light was. So you just look at someone and you say, Your light shines. And that person comes out of darkness because God has landed. Amen. The ground was cursed. Now the Lord is saying to stretch forth new heavens and found. Lay the foundation of the earth and say to Sire, you are my people. So when God takes the shortcut to put his words in our mouth, that means he's going to create something. He's going to resolve a situation. That means that... That's the difference between Moses and the other prophet. Moses had a mighty word. 
God didn't speak through vision. God just put the words in his mouth. Because I want to finish the class today, how do we go about this? To have the words in our mouths. First of all, we saw this with Elijah, so we pray. The four openings of heaven, you have to use them. Amen? You have to worship in the watches that I spoke to you about. So pray at all times. Pray earnestly. So when you're faced with an injustice, you see an evil, don't pray. Praying earnestly here, we learned this in the book of, in the class of prophet intercessor, is to pray with a lot of energy. You pray with a lot of energy, praying tongues. Agonia is the sort of prayer that Jesus prayed. You have to pray in agonia mode, saying, oh God, oh God. You have to to pray this way, saying, oh my God, your name is not glorified. My God, see, people are suffering, Father. You just speak and speak and speak and speak. After some point of time, the heavens will open. And this is, you have to bring offerings, all of us in the presence of God, just seek for his face in prayer for some time. So first day to receive the words on your lips is to pray earnestly like we saw Elijah doing. Hallelujah. So when the word comes with, when the word comes earnestly, one thing that happens is that it comes into your heart. You need to pray with regards to a pure heart. So pray and say, Lord, create in me a pure heart, renew in me a willing spirit. Renew in me a willing spirit. This was Psalm 51. I told you to pray with it. So pray earnestly. You know the heavens will open. When the heavens open, heavens come down and go up. But they will appear in the world of God. The Bible says that when these words come, its Bible says that it's from the abundance of the heart that the lips speak out. So, if there's too many jealousy in you, hatred, hatred, sorry, bitterness, everything which makes your heart impure, it will be complicated. So pray. I say, oh God, create me a pure heart by the blood of the Lamb. Create me a pure and clean heart. Oh God, the good disposition of the Spirit is courage because to declare the words that we call the Epo, to declare these words. We need boldness. So you're going to ask God, God, give me a willing spirit. So create in me in pure heart. So I remove every hatred. As though I was going back to Gilgal, a renew in me a willing spirit. Give me a good willing heart. So you just pray accordingly. Because once you sweat the heart, once you swap the house, the words will come. And there's some things which can be obstacles. Psalm 51, verse 1 to 14, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 22. Let's go to Mark chapter 13, verse 11. Mark 
reading the word of God. But when they arrest you and deliver you, do not worry beforehand, but premeditate or premeditate what you'll say. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that's for it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit. So when they arrest you, when you'll be faced with some challenges, do not worry beforehand about what you'll say. So worry beforehand troubles the prophecy that will come on your lips. You're like asking, what will I sing? It's very difficult when you're worrying and you're planning exactly what you're going to sing or say. Don't try to anticipate what God is going to say. Because the Bible says it's at, at that very hour. So it doesn't come first. It gives it to you immediately. The prophecy that comes on your lips says, for you will not speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. What can prevent the Holy Spirit from, war, from speaking? It's creation by anticipation. So generally, this often happens to me because I know this is the way the Holy Spirit is working. When I want to prepare a message, those that, the, the things that I preach are words that come on my lips. The words that come on the list don't come to suck the devil or destroy. It comes to exhort. It's prophecies like any other. But for example, I, I spend time in prayer to open my heaven. On Sunday, when I come to the Mormon Senegal life, I need to feel the peace of the Lord. When I don't feel that peace of the Lord, if I don't feel it by 4 a.m., that's when I'll begin to revise what I said last time to know what I'm supposed to say. I'll start thinking about it. But generally, that's not what I'm after. Because it may happen that at that very moment, he may say something. Because when you planned too many things, when it's here, for example, give such a tip, you'll be like, mm, I didn't study this well. I didn't study this well. And this gift started in me in the beginning of my conversion. In the beginning when I would evangelize, I was a young Muslim who gave my life to Christ. I would evangelize people and people would ask questions. And I would say, I didn't have the answer. And the answer would just come. And I would leave and then something would tell me, you lied. And I would open the Bible and see the word in the Bible. I, I would say the word without seeing the verse first. And this made me study the word of the, of the Lord. I began to say immediately what God wanted me to say. And this happens to many people. You see, when you worry, when you don't worry, sorry, when you don't worry, it will flow. From time to time, you add from your imagination, your thoughts, and as time goes, just correct it. Say, Lord, create me a willing heart. It is worry that comes to create a mix-up. But as you are not afraid, if I have no revelation for the moments of the good life, I won't worry. As soon as I feel that that is with me, when I sit, many of my messages on Sunday, often when you see me, I'm on my computer in the midst of a message and I start writing, it's because it's just coming. So I'm on the pulpit and I start noting. Because that's when the Lord is giving me the word. Sometimes I spend a lot of time in worship because I haven't yet received the message because it comes in the hour. It comes in the hour. Given that the word comes in the hour, I worship. I'm like, oh God, I'm waiting on you. When I'm saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm really, really waiting on the Lord. I'm saying, oh Lord Jesus, what are you saying today? Oh, oh. At some point, in the hour, the word then comes. Amen. I used to tell my, my brother, Pastor Ivan, Pastor Ivan is a prophet. He don't, people don't know. And I was telling him, Pastor, what you're doing is very powerful. The time he spends in worship is to receive the word on the lips. God usually speaks to him before. But to receive power, he spends time in worship. So God puts the power of deliverance on his lips. 
It's not so much the information. Generally, the information he has it beforehand, but that power, he receives it during that worship time. So he opens heaven in worship. And when he opens the heaven in worship, the power to say what he has to say comes such that what he says in the moment he says that is a prophetic, not because it's written in the book, it's prophetical because the word that comes is not the word that said, does says the Lord, here's what's going to happen to you. It's a word that comes to deliver, it's a word that comes to heal. Elijah is not prophesied over the future. We don't see the prophecy of Elijah, which says in four years, like Jeremiah, but his words were on his lips. He said, at my word. So when Pastor Ivan is under the spirit and declares things, wow, I'm telling you, it produces huge damages. But he says, you're delivered. It just happens immediately. That's a prophetic. Without the prophetic, you cannot deliver people. Without this level of prophetic, people will stay captive. You need to open heaven. That's why when Paul said, if I come to you, speaking to you by doctrine, there's some people who speak out of prophecy. They speak out of revelation. And I believe that Pastor Marcel is the same. I don't know how he receives this message. But Pastor Ivan, because I speak to you, speak to him God's his message, there's an energy when Pastor Marcel preaches, which is not natural. And when I listen to the message on, uh, on internet, I was like, when I listen, I'm like, he's prophesying, he's prophesying. Okay, may God bless you abundantly. So what do we do to receive the words on our lips? Pray earnestly. Do not worry. Purify your heart. I pray over my heart. Give me a pure spirit according to Psalm 51. Purify my heart and do not worry. If you're saying, would this happen? Would this happen or not? War will cause you not to receive anything. So the most important is for you to be at ease. If God grants you grace to have information before, note them. If you have them precisely at that moment, just keep praying. Even if you're with people, do not worry about what to say. Commit the meeting to the hand of the Lord. Pray for your heart to be willing. Worship to open heaven and worry no longer about what you're going to sing or what you're going to say. When you do the prophetic worship, the Lord will give you what to say or what to sing. When you start preparing your worship, the service you're going to lead, just pray. If He gives you the melody, write them down. If He doesn't give them to you, don't worry about them or look for them. Keep praying. If it doesn't give you the title of the song, don't look for it. Just keep praying. And in the hour, you're going to receive the song that will deliver. Every song you prepared too much before, went through your revelation, wrote on your paper. The demons have seen it. People have seen it. And because the demons of the Antichrist are around, they'll come and say, Oh, God has told you to sing this. Your soul is restored. So he wants to restore the souls. So he will send demons. Anti-restoration of souls. So you're going to be fighting. As you seek a restoration, there will be a battle against the restoration. Meanwhile, when God says, Don't worry, He says, In the hour, you're going to receive. So just say, Let's just worship. Let's just worship and speak in tongues. After some time, palm, the melody will come down. If this is a song I'm supposed to sing, it start singing. And what you will say in the song, just be connected to the Holy Kiss. Don't sing out of singing sake. What you will say. When you say, for example, I'm waiting on you. If it came through the prophetic, all those here, there with you, will feel their thirst for God. They will open the heavens in the place. But you are the, prof- you are the leader of praise that opened the doors. But when your word comes, it's as though it creates the thirst of God in the newcomer. The praise leader sang this song saying, I'm waiting on you. It's not like a singing a melody. What he's saying is that he's waiting on God. He's thirsty. I'm waiting on you. His eyes open on, I'm waiting on God. The leader of worship has just opened heaven and then the spirit tells him, he feels that there's a song coming and it goes on that song. When he goes on that song, things start moving, things start moving. After some time, it goes into deliverance and immediately, sometimes our choruses are not the prophetic because they prefer themselves too much. They've written the list of all the songs and when they come, the spirit tells them, go left, let's go left. Everybody is just... 
focus on what they rehearse. Stay in the rehearsal, you see if your prophecy will manifest. They said, do not be prepared beforehand and you want to prepare everything. If you don't know how to connect, prepare yourself beforehand. This is just prepare yourself. But if you've chosen a lead, pray for the person. If the person is in the prophetic, if you're my children, the prophetic anointing is upon you. So I have no worry with regards to that. I know you all have the same anointing. If they tell give us two songs, give them to us and flow for the rest of the time. And everyone will follow it because you're the lead. The lead will allow a pianist to lead, let him lead. Because to open heaven, we need a, a leader. The guitarist can lead, the guitarist can give the melody. But we need to say, musically speaking, today, he starts playing the note because the melody can pre create the prophetic atmosphere. When Elisha was supposed to come and prophesy, he asked for someone who play the harp. So don't always think that. You see, there are melodies. Don't you say that they're open heavens? When people start playing the musical notes, you feel that you're ready, we're going to stop here. And so we're going to end the class of Bethel. Next Tuesday, we're going to start with the class of Jericho. And then we're going to break the walls. That's why I said that this teaching is the bridge between Bethel and Jericho. We'll receive now, we're going to release the words. We're going to learn different type of prophetic declaration. We have prophetic declaration in preaching mode of restoration to break world walls, spiritual battles. We're going to come back on teachings that we gave during the School of the Prophets and the sister because they talked about the parts. We talked about Jericho. Why is it that to bring down the walls, God make the people of Israel go around the wall and dancing? You understand why those who have the gift of prophetic dancing, why need to feel the music? What do your actions or movement translate in the prophetic dancing? You, the Lord puts his words in people's mouth, but it can also be in the movements of people. In Jericho mode, we learn all of this to allow the power of God to be manifested to over to destroy the walls, to bring forth. May God bless you abundantly. This is what I wanted to share with you. We're going to pray unto the Lord for all of this. And Lord, thank you for the spirit of prophecy. I believe in you right now. You've said that you touch our lips and put your words on our lips. May your, you said that you cover us with your shadow. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon your servants. Where your son, daughter have to declare words of life and prophecy to release situation. Oh God, be with them. I pray for all the prophets and students of the school of the prophets following. May your power be upon them. Your grace of abound on them. May your strength be with them in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Now receive this gift of prophecy. Receive the gift of prophecy. Receive the gift of prophecy. Receive the gift of prophecy. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you. May divine grace overbound in your life. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Someone say a good amen. May God keep you and bless you. Amen. Stay connected for some minutes. As I give you special information, how are you, my daughters? I will be blessed by today's training. You are prophetess, intercessors. We need to get together, join forces to deal with the devil. We can be instrumental in the hand of God to bring the life of God. Amen. May God bless you abundantly. So pray for us right now. You see, I want my shirt on Jesus' sake because in some minutes I'll be going for the village of Emankono, which is not far from Tessale. It's different from the town of Mankono. 
maybe it's the inhabitants of Mankono that went to the area of Her Mankono and created that village, but it's not the same village. And we're going to go to a village called Kwasiko beside it. We're starting tonight. So pray for the program. Pray for God to enlighten this town. May the light of God shine in these two towns, which is a huge village, Emakono and Kwasiko. May the light of God shine and darkness move. May divine favor be manifested in the town of Tessale. Prostitution, sexual morality, fetishism, bewitchment is very present in this town. The local people are blocked. They're not succeeding. We believe that the salvation and light of God will shine. So pray with me. Pray with all of the intercessors. And let's pray also for our future program to 931, which will be in the east of Cote d'Ivoire. May God bless you abundantly. Is there any information that I've forgotten? Yes, night fire. So usually it's on Fridays. But for this weekend, next weekend, given that the 28th of May, I'll be in the crusade. Our night fire is going to hold on the 30th of May at midnight. I was getting used to Friday. So the 30th of May, we're going to have night fire, okay? Not on Friday. So do your all night with me while we'll be in Tiasele. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. We'll end with prayer. Okay, let's go. Go ahead and sing. The hymn of Spentacles. We want your fire, dear Lord. At your altar, Father, I come to offer myself. I dedicate my life unto you as a sacrifice. Lord, may your fire come down upon us. May your army rise on fire by your fire. Let your army rise up and set ablaze by your fire. Spirit of God blow in this place. We are thirsty and ready. Anoint with your spirit. And on fire. Let's be set ablaze with your fire. Send your fire. I want your fire. Lead me by your fire. I want your fire. 